Nice to meet you. My name is the Kai Singh. Yeah, you can call me Happy or anyone, Miss or Dr. Happy, as you like. And today I will present you how to do your research framework. So I think we can start right now. I'm going to share the screen. Okay. Uh, Dr. Te. And this is, yeah. Uh, you, would you like uh, the student to intersect while you talk or you would like them to wait until the end of the session? Then you, they can ask you questions. How would you like it? I'm okay if you have questions during my presentation. Okay. And for those students who want uh, who Both have any questions, can ask. Yeah, it will be easier. You can ask directly. I afraid that later you will, I mean, you forgot your questions or all those. Yeah. I don't mind. You can interrupt my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yizanti. Okay, let's we begin. Okay, you can see my slide, right? I would like you all to go to the Mentimeter. Okay, um, my topic today is the building research framework. I think some of you are a new coming in and my name is Dae Kai Sing. I self introduction first and I completed my PhD in 2018 and I went to the industry as a tour consultant and tour leaders to quite a number of European countries. And after that, I joined UMS as a lecturer. And I'm here today to present the building research framework. What is theory? What is must have a theory? And what is theory? Yeah. Um, first, what is about theories? And you can see that this is a theory of the hierarchy mixed theories. This is one of the examples. Okay. Okay. Husna, you are very honest. <laughs> okay, things. Okay, last week's go for that. Actually, I'm not sure. Mm. You know that you are going to do a research. Uh, I mean, I forgot to ask actually, uh, for PhD student, what did you take for your master? Is it by research or coursework? I should ask these questions because I want to know whether you have coursework. Okay. I'm not sure how many of you have touched about research, but coursework should be have a mini, mini research, right? Mini thesis, I think. Yes, so, yeah, okay. So you will know well what are the conceptual framework? I assume that. Conceptual framework is a research on positions on the problem and gives directions to the study. It may be adaptations of a model used in a previous study, which modifications to fit the inquiry. What is the inquiries that here I mentioned? It is actually is the problem statements, your research title, in your proposal defense later on, you will have a framework, but either conceptual or theoretical is up to your research context, your, your, your contents of your research and what you want to do. Conceptual framework is normally will come out in your qualitative research. If you are going to interview, if you are doing the uh, focus group discussions, all those the qualitative research, then you will have a conceptual framework. But at the end, when you go for the viva or for proposal defense, the examiner will ask you why you have a framework since there is not a theory to, to, to do it because you are building a theory when you are doing qual qualitative research. But actually conceptual framework is a guide. It's a guideline for you to do in your next chapter and further chapters. So I would prefer you have a framework during while you have done your literature review. So you know what is the next thing you are going to do. Later, I will show you uh, two theses. One is uh, mainly for qualitative and one is for quantitative. Okay. Yeah. 
conceptual framework actually it is very clear and straightforward. It's a concept that are placed within a logical and the sequential design. You must have a concept, you must have ideas what you are going to do. So the conceptual framework don't have formula, you must be followed, and there is not a must thing for research. It's what you have in your mind for research. Why I love to do research is because I want to study some things that the others may not be well known than me. I'm the ones who experts in my thesis, it's not the others. Some people will tell me that um, because of the supervisor asked me to have a conceptual framework, so I must have to have it. But you need to justify, you, you must know why you need to have I mean, the framework in your research is not right. because a supervisor tell me then I will do it, but you need to know why. Okay, this is the process of to be to do your PhD or master. Hello, you have any questions? If not, then please mute your mic. Okay, next, um, conceptual frameworks is represents a less formal structure and use for studies in which existing theory is inapplicable or insufficient. Why you have a conceptual framework? Because there is not theory that can be used or you want to build a theory in your qualitative research. Based on specific concepts and propositions come from empirical observations and six sense. Yeah, you must have a six sense and you have the observations you found a problems maybe like now you can see like COVID-19 there are many things that we are unclear actually whether we can for example like tourism they have a problem for tourism how they're going to survive and I want to know I, through the observations I know that there are many people are, are unemployed at the moment so what can I do for that so you can go, this is a big question, but for PhD, you are not going to save the world. So you need to be specific. Actually, I, I have mis, I think it is a misunderstanding for a PhD, like a title doctor, then the people will think, oh, you know everything. No, I think a PhD once, uh, is not you know everything, but you only will ask to be expertise in one area or one topic. The rest, I'm still very, hmm, I don't know, actually. So my family will ask me, wow, you, you study a lot, so you know everything. But I, I tell them, no, I know I'm only expert in one section, which is what I did for my PhD or my master. Or I engage in other research projects. So I just want to tell you that there must be a problems or ideas which is you want to explore you love to do research or because of you want to be a lecturer or you want to just get the a certificate is fine but this is the process you need to go through so uh, for conceptual framework is more to the reduce theory from a conceptual framework at the end it is a theory building of course you cannot just um, I mean you you finish your PhD then you come out of theory there's not the writings everything's when we do a research we have a, a little contributions to the academics every once of it and after that you would think that uh, why I need to do a research actually that is something um it doesn't write because um it's not much contributions to the world. Why I have to do that? Some people will think about that. Actually, I, I was I was thinking that way as well. But after that, I will come out. Why how the theory can be formed is not because of one person, it's because of all of all, all of us are doing research. You know what is called research? Why there is not such is research. Why we have a literature review? Have you think about that? Have you ever wondered why we need to do research for my master or PhD, or even you just want to get a certificate? Yeah. Research actually, everyone will contribute a little in the academics or practical. Um, I think less in practicals or in industry, more is academic theories. And that will be 
is companion research a uh, high impact journals, Elsevier, Scott's Eye journals, and to come up a uh, final comes and which is will be form a theory. So like um you know every especially in social science research because every time it's changing. That's why we have to like copy I think some of you may have heard from your supervisor to use the other research and apply it in in sub in Malaysia or Sabah or KK or some areas using their framework, using their 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 question air, you just modify a bit to fulfill your master or PhD. I believe that you heard about this. Yeah, it's simple. That's it. It's because of that. Every places the outcome will be different. Um yeah. It is a yeah, straightforward concept and to propose a relationship among the concept, concepts in a study. It's not only a relationship, it can be a process. For, for example, you are building like you want to develop uh, something like for now, like a strategy for recovering, like tourism recovering strategy, some things, uh, how you're going to revitalize strategies plannings or the methods, then will be a process. It's not must be a relationships. Okay, to develop to provide and context for interpreting the study outcome result findings. To explain observations. Yeah, the observations, what I tell you just now is uh, what the problem statement you come from, how you're going to build your problem statement from and to encourage theory development that is useful to practical. Yeah, this will be a bit hard because a theory is theory. When you go into industry, yeah, it might, it doesn't work actually because I went to, uh, I mean, industry before. So yeah, it's totally different world compared to the academic. And before we go to the theoretical framework, first you must know what is the theory. For PhD student, I think you are well known about that. Uh, only the master student, especially who are doing the qualitative, uh, quantitative research, you must have a theory, and you will why you will want to you will wonder why, why I have a theory. I I know what I'm going to do. Why I must have a theory to support my framework or my my research. And here is the as the reason for you. Theories are constructing in order to explain, predict, and master phenomena. Because theory is not just um, one people to, to, to suggest. It's many people already tested. The theory is really uh, a thing that can be a fundamental for your, for your research. And for example, the relationship. And what other theory works actually is you want to know their relationship, events, or the behavior. In many examples, we are constructing models of reality. Yeah, the practicals or you, it is a, because social science, socials, people, how they work, how they behave, how they do, how they make their choice decisions. We trying to use a research or we form a theory to explain. Is this an attendance? I think there is an attendance link, right, uh, Dr. Izandi? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Remember to check in your attendance. And a theory generalize, generalize, generalize about observations and consists of an interrelated uh, coherent set. It is like construct of idea and models. Why the research have must have a generalizations for the for the data at the end is because, as I mentioned just now, if you read a review paper, I, I, I don't want to say like a conceptual frame paper that like you go, if you have a go through a very high impact journals, which is a review paper, they review, a, for example, 30 or 40 high impact journals, Scopus, ISI journals, and then they come out a final result that will be a strong for a theory to form, to be formed. Okay, theoretical frameworks is like building the foundations. How I, um, and here I'm going to share you what the foundations that I mentioned here, for example, I'm doing my, I was 
hold on, I, I think I share my thesis here. This is my thesis, the determinants of long and medium haul international tourist length of stay in Malaysia. I give you an example so you will know well about what is that. And I'm going to do... See, this is my framework and how I'm going to mix with the theoretical and this is theoretical framework. The theory that I use is um, the, the theory, theory of plant behavior. The plant behavior, as I mentioned just now, have three items, which is attitude, this is the first item, and subjective norms, and perceived behavior control and self-perceived behavior. And these three are from the, from the theory. And this Malaysia marketing mix like four, four piece, the ones that I, I suggest to have, and this is the new things and there's a, a new variables that I'm going to test my length of stay. You must be uh, make sense because marketing mix are four P like price, place, um, promotions and products are four things will affect the people attitudes toward the length of stay. This is a moderate uh, mediator. And I also have a moderator at and travel, travel distance. So this is my theoretical framework. You must have a theory which is support your, your, your framework, your house. Yeah, my fundamentals is the theory of plant behavior for this. So it, it makes sense and sound. Okay, if not strong enough, then your house will totally fail because you can you can see if I use like hierarchy neat neat theory. The new theory is for testing the motivations, the motivation for them to, to stay longer in Malaysia. Yeah, but actually, if I use that theory, you can see um, there is not really feel my, uh, to fix my, my PhD research context. So at the end, you will find that will be a problem for you to, to, to do your data analysis. So you must try to um, um, collect theory for your research framework. And theoretical framework must be rational for, for predictions about the relationships amongst variables of a research study. Theories are generated by using inductive. I think you, you know what is inductive and deductive approach, right? Quality, quantity, or other the things are very basic thing. Uh, a deductive approach is used to evaluate and modify existing theory by testing predictions about relationships between also phenomena. It is like um, independence variables and dependent variables. The relationship we're going to test it. Okay, these are the differences between the deductive and inductive, inductive research, uh, approach. I'm not sure how many of you are going to use a quality or how many of you are using a quantity, but I, I believe that most of you will be using quantity, right? Quantitative, because it is a statistically proof. So it is very clear and cut if you use a quantity. And because the numbers tell the story. If you go for interview a bit hard because you need to prove that your, your data is um, travel business is credited and reliable. So uh, that both of them will be a difference where, how you're going to do a difference. It's, it's a totally different research uh, methods. For deductive is a uh, quantitative is going to test the theory by using a research, uh, whether accepted or rejected, or you need to revise. Yeah, this is the hypothesis tested and inductive. It will go to like interview uh, quanti qualitative data is correct on the possible reason why it happens and trends in the data are as a mind. Dr. Day, 
Mm. Uh, can I ask a question? I think some of the students like uh, might be asking, yeah. So in other yeah. words, if it is a qualitative, okay, if it's a qualitative research, meaning that there would be no theory first, you only found the theory at the end of your uh, research. Am I correct? Um, yeah, yes. correct. Right, can. So uh, yeah, so that's why some students who are doing um, qualitative, they would like, doctor, I would like to find theory now. I said, you need to do, your, your approach is inductive approach, meaning that you have to observe first, right? Yeah. Uh, you have yeah, to observe, right. you have to collect the reasons first. Okay, not theory testing, mm. such as quantitative. Mm. Quantitative ni dia dah ada uh, theory tu, so you need to test sahaja. Okay, that's the... Yeah, betul. Yeah, betul kan? So that is the... I think uh, for the students lah, for those um, who are just uh, yeah. have ideas. So started. Have, yeah, started. Yes. Okay. Continue, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Izanti, for clarifications. Yeah, there are two different approach for your research methods. And I believe you will go through by yourself as well, because you need to write in your chapter three in your methodology. But first of all, you, you must have an idea which one that you are going to do, uh, whether it's quali or quanti. Don't ask me which one is better. There is no such thing. It depends on your what you want to do for your research. It's your own research and don't want, don't, you, you don't do that. I ask your supervisor, what should I do? Huh? What should I do next? This is your research. It's not your supervisor research. So um, you need to know what actually you want to do. At least you have an idea, but you do know whether you want to go for quality or quantity. I can tell you which where, um, of course, it still depends on the title and the fields that you do, you choose. And both where are fine, but to be honest, for quantitative will be much more easy to, to prove that the, the data is reliability or all those because it is a number of things. If you go for the quant qualitative, yeah, you need to prove that how you're going to get the data and the reliability, how you're going to, to, to show the trustworthiness for the for the data that you corrected. Because my my master was um do uh was did uh, qualitative, so I know the process. Yeah, like member checks, you will have to, I did a uh, in-depth interview, so I sent back to the interviewee to check whether uh, the ones that I transcripted is correct, the script and all the data. I need to send back to them for clarification, for checking, and other things you need to do. Like, uh, you need to go through for the travel fitness assess assessments for the um, proven that your data is valid, that's all. And quantitative is easy because of, yeah, as I said, it's numbers thing. Later I will show you both different thesis. And but for interview, a good things for you, actually, if, if you, you did the interview, you can publish a lot of papers because that will be one of the Mm, how to say that? Uh, one of the requirements for you to finish, I mean, graduate from master and PhD. By the way, my master is by using a uh, qualitative, and I managed to publish ten papers, uh, both proceeding paper and also two acts from Scopus Journal. One is Q one Scopus Journals from my master thesis, and I using qualitative research. So yeah. There is an example. Okay, and as I said, inductive reasoning is to observe people situations. You have come out of problem statements and analyze for patterns and going to do like interview to find out the relationships and sub propose a theory development. Yeah, mm, you will come out like few teams of variables, but you are not going to, to correct the quantitative of course, but you just suggest. I will show you my paper from my master thesis. 
then you will see how I going to form a theory developments. How I going to form? Uh, people will questions. Hey, how I going to do? Uh? I mean, theory is like, wow. I am. I don't know how to explain it. But like, theory is like some people that very clever, or some people are talented to do that. But how I going to? I mean, build up a theory. So later I will show you what how is it. Huh? Okay, next we go to the deductive reasonings and it's a construct from the theory. We will construct the the hypothesis and data corrections, uh equation A or other forms and test the hypothesis and whether it's accepted or rejected for the hypothesis. Okay, this is the theoretical framework. Uh, as I said, it must be a reason, uh, must be a rational, must be, must be make sense. It's very simple. Hypothesis, uh, yeah, it is for hypothesis to building your hypothesis and a frame of references. Uh, actually, it's a frame of your work. You are, what are you going to do from the first, next, and the steps? And that uh, how you're going to build the frameworks is to your observations, the definitions of concepts, what are you going to do of the variables, the variables that you want to test. And the result design, are you going to quality or quantity or um, and interpretations, um, the literature review and generalizations. Oh, here I want to share you. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are already finished your chapter two literature review uh, for new coming maybe you still stuck in the chapter one for problem statement and background and another thing i want to mention is um significant of study is very important so you need to have a very strong uh, why you want to focus and what uh why the the, re the start the research or uh, the proposed the proposed research are so important okay and then you will go for the literature review the main thing for the teacher review, how you're going to build the theoretical framework is generalizations, general, generalizations. Why I say so? You are going to compare the previous studies, right? Uh, they, are made, they are using the same theory, but in different areas, for example, like uh, Iceland, uh, in Bingnang, uh, many areas that are different places from KK. If yeah, you are, you do it for in KK. So you need to compare all of the research and find out the relationships. And then you will give the reason why you have formed the, the theoretical framework. As I said, you don't need to follow exactly what the other people write. You can have your own items, you have can your own variables to add into the, the theory. So you form your own theoretical framework. But of course, as I said, there will be a fundamentals, which is like, for example, I'm using, I was using the theory of plant behaviors. So what is yours? Okay, why theoretical frameworks important? If your framework is logically sound and supported by previous research studies, which is uh, will be written in your literature review, there is a strong possibility that the predictions or hypothesis evolving from that framework will be supported. As I said, research, you are going to research the things. So it doesn't mean must, it, it will not, uh, how to say, it is not a must outcomes. It's uh, okay if your hypothesis are not supported or rejected, but must be with reasons. That will be very important in your chapter five discussions if there is not supported then you need to tell me why why there is a difference from the previous study and that will be fixed to your context you can say that uh, maybe um, malaysia context is like this uh, people uh, the cultures the people how they think things are different from europeans all these are the reasons you must have it in your discussions you know when i was um as a as a minor for for waiwa or i went for the waiwa presentations or a proposal defense i i found out a lot of 
I mean, the students were, were how to say, they were discussed the, in their chapter five. It's like, it's really like a literature review. They will talk about a lot from the literature review, but they didn't have their own idea for it. Discussions is really from you. What's in your mind? You already do did the research, or you already have done your data analysis, you already get the result. Then in discussion, you can just write whatever you like. Of course, it must be reason, must be reasonable. It must be make sense. So that's that is discussions. It's not the literature review. You need to know that what what they want in that sections. And formulating the theoretical frameworks is uh, why why we do we need to have it is to see clearly the variables of the study. When you when you finish your chapter two, you will come out of framework, and when you go into chapter three, you will depends on your framework as well until your chapter five. The whole thesis. That's why we said the theoretical frameworks is a fundamental of um how to say it's a basement for your research. It's help in your data analysis, is essential in preparing a research proposal using descriptive and experimental risk uh, me methods. Okay, I think the frameworks, yeah. To make research finding meaningful and generalizable, help to stimulate research and the extensions of knowledge by providing both directions and infectious. Okay, keeping in mind both frameworks may be represented as model. What is model? Actually, people always actually people always confuse model. And then, kenapa ada yang model, ada yang some some people some people will mentions about model, some people will talking about theory. What exactly is what are the difference for these two things? So people confuse theory is for people to test. Model is the people already tested and come out a model which is workable in that research context. It may not be applied, applicable in other places, but it's only applicable in that research context. That are the difference. And model is a simple like, um, representation that helps the researchers to express abstract the concepts and relationships easily using minimum words. It is a life framework. Two types of models that there will be, you can use it for your thesis. First is the uh, schematic models, which is normally we will use for quality or quantity. It is a conceptual framework and theoretical framework. It is the same things. It is convey concepts and propositions using boxes, arrow, uh, like something like uh, mediating, um, moderating, all this. You will be have a different arrows and other symbols. And mathematical or statistical models. Yeah, it is, it is using for letter numbers and mathematical symbol. Actually, this one can be used in your chapter three, but there is not a very a must thing for you. Okay, this is the mathematical models. For example, if you are doing like a uh, statistic, when you do a data analysis, uh, but most of you, I think you will use POS. I'm not critics or saying that POS is no good. For me, I feel that POS is really only to know the variable, but it's not for 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 every items. I, I don't want to talk much because you will confuse later on. I will show you later on for the from the thesis. And this is the schematical models uh, always used in social science research. Yeah, testing the hypothesis. Uh, this is the one that you are going to use for your proposal defense. And people will look at your framework 
first things they will see they will comment they will critic your framework for sure for your that's why you must be knows why every line every every error that you put in your framework what does it mean what does it mean you must know this and use in qualitative and quantitative research methods uh, test the relationships between the variables and this one, I'm not sure how many of you are understand what are the differences of moderator and modi mediator. Anyone can share with me, uh, based on your understanding. Anyone? Especially for PhD students. Hello. Am I talking to myself the, all the times? <laughs> Anyone's here? Who's not? Yes, doctor. Yeah, you tell them upper differences. Differences between mediator. Yeah. Um, in my understanding, mediator um. Focus more on um, the like the process in where like it will affect the outcome. I think. Yeah. How about moderator? Moderator focus more on the process. I think. Mm. I think I told you before. <laughs> you have explained it before, but I think. Okay, it's okay. What are the difference? Very simple. Mediator, you remember one thing as affecting, affecting one, affecting other, and at the end will come out a result. Level of relationship, how strong is it? Um, yeah, you just remember mediating mediator is affecting or explaining. For example, like you can see the diagram here, marketing mix, like 4P, affect attitudes, and at the end will affect the length of stay. Both of them will affect at the first and then go to at the end the result. So affecting, the words is affecting. Okay, let's we go for the moderator. Moderator, the keywords is inference. Inference. Like 4P, like attitude, uh, the theory of plant behavior, how they go for the length of stay, we categorize both like gender, male and female. Maybe a male will be stay longer than female. We are comparing in the cohort. Like age, senior will staying longer or compare with the youngest, there will be inference. Yeah, the moderator will inference the relationship from independent variable to dependent variable. So you remember two words. One is affecting, another one is inference. This one is very clear and yeah, concise. So you just remember two things that you will, you will not miss these two variables. So you can see here, actually I finished the framework, but I'm going to show you my thesis. What are the quality and quantity difference? And this is my PhD thesis. Okay. I am going to show you. The mathematics part that you can use, you see, I have a lot of formula for my for my uh, statistic evaluations. So actually, you can turn it to be a framework, but uh, yeah, it is up to you. You you don't want to do that, also can, but it's good that you have this, so you can justify actually you are really know what are the formula. It's rather than you just, um, I mean, everything you just put there, or I'm using PLS, mark PLS 
for data analysis and path analysis or SEM, but actually you don't know how they calculate it. Of course, it is a bit hard, but it's good for you to justify and the examiner will not question you for that. Okay, another thing is, that's why during my YWA, I, I got a minor corrections, very minor. I didn't change much. I, I, do, I did it for one day, then submit my thesis. Okay. Another thing is I want to tell you is the theoretical framework and hypothesis building. How are you going to write this part? It's not, um, how to say, you cannot just saying that, uh, sorry, I need to show you the, the all things. I just give you an idea because this is not a compulsory for you to do that because some of you will have a different context. But you, you must remember that if you use quantitative, you must have these sections like relationship based on the literature review, what the others say, like marketing mix influence the length of stay, the relationship. Some of them may say it's positive, some of them will say negative. And you need to come out the uh, at the end which one you want to choose. So before that, I would like to share with you like the literature review, how I going to uh, arrange my literature review is first thing, of course, you need to talk about what you are, your, your main things. Mine is a uh, tourism demands, a length of stay and trick decision making theories. Yeah, I need to go for theory. If you are doing the quali, qualitative, you no need to go for theory, but of course depends on what you have studied. And then you go the length of state theory and studies. It means like these two, you combine the peer study, what they use the other theory. Maybe they, they didn't use the theory of prime behavior, but they use others. But you need to compare two of them. Um, but this one is for PhD, uh, for PhD level. Uh, master, you don't need to go deep for that. And then you need to find out the determinant of length of stay, any variables that you, you were going to use for your own research. Then you go one by one, the peer study, what they say, what they use, and what are the results they found. And you go to theoretical framework, how you're going to build the framework. And every section um, is not only, some of you will, will stop in here before 2.6 but they didn't explore the relationship. But this is very, very important because at the end in your chapter five, it's discussions, discussion from your data. You must have a literature review to support it. What are the difference at the end and why it is different? Why the hypothesis is um, supported or rejected? Even if supported, you still have to give a reason why in the Malaysia context or in KK context or whatever in your research. Uh, context, but it's not, not like, oh, you're talking like, hey, it's similar to who, I mean, the previous study, they said, da, 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 da. it's not like that for discussions. Don't do that, that again and again. And the relationship, and then finally, you will have a methodology review because I am using a survival analysis that is very, quite rare and um, shouldn't people will use that uh, because actually I'm using Stata. I'm not using like POS, like uh, SPSS. POS is a very advanced statistical, uh, statistical tools and the apps and the software is, I can show you what is it, but though that I'm no, I'm not doing the data analysis, but I am happy to share, Donna, this is the Stata. Okay, if you want to use this, you can, you may ask me at the end. Okay, and then this one actually is like, we will write a lot and this will be a, a data set. This is all about the coding. So, and this is the analysis. Actually, here also got SEM, uh, building the, 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 how to say, it can be a G, G S E M and also can S E M, which is the PLS did, but PLS only have S E M. They don't have G S E M. The generalized S E M is if I'm not mistaken. Okay. 
can mediator and moderator be used together when building the framework? Yes, yes, of course. That I will show you my thesis. I use both. For PhD, yeah, you need to have, but master, maybe you can use either one, but there is no compulsory or there is no masting for your research. It's your own research. I just show you the data. Okay, I'm going back to the thesis. Okay. And the methodology review. Next, I will go for a. You see, you have a pilot study. Survival analysis, which I showed you just now, there are so many formulas. And descriptive analysis, reliability test. This is a very normal. Okay. See, this is my research objective. One and 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4. This is my hypothesis once. I'm going to test it is a direct relationship. I have a question regarding the research framework. Do I need only a bright concession framework for mixed method research? Um, they, as I said, it's not a must think. You can have a concession framework in your literature review. But after you did, uh, you done your your qualitative data corrections, then you can come out a theoretical framework because you already have a theory, which is you can look back for the um, previous study, which theories that actually it fixed with your research, and then in that chapter you can come out a theoretical framework, or you may have a idea. Actually, you can have a theory critical framework in your literature review because as you are using the mixed methods because you want to you have a fundamental which is a theory so you are going to do a mixed mode means that you are going to correct the data like interview or focus group or others methods for your qualitative right so you can just find out some new things so add into the theory so you can have a theoretical framework in your literature review if you are using mixed mode as I said, there is no must or compulsory for any research form. It's your research. What I'm telling you actually is um, what you should have in your thesis. But there is not a must things for you. If you don't have any frameworks, it's fine. But you need to justify why you don't have a framework. Okay? You need to know why or why you have a conception, why you have a theoretical. This is if you have a good reason is fine and your examiner or your supervisor is agree with that no problem at all as long as you can justify as i share as i said research is your own i mean it's a new thing for you for everyone here because you don't know what will be come out at the end so i'm not going to stop you from think creativity uh creativity or others so you can use any but i just suggest you to have framework because you will not miss some things. Okay, I go back this one. This is the direct relationship. So it's quite easy. And I'm going to show you the moderator. I have both our moderator and mediator. And this is the mediator. Mediator is attitudes. Independent variable is marketing mix. And dependent variables is length of stay. Yes. Hello. Any questions? Any question? Okay. Now then I will go. Uh, okay. Why I put cash hypothesis 1.1 is because I have a di uh, direction. I mean, direct relationship previous in my, uh, I mean, previous part. So once I go for the mediator, I will, because I'm using survival analysis, I'm not using SEM or path analysis, which is only show me the construct result. I'm not sure. Mary, are you here, Mary? Sorry. Because Mary quite expert in uh, PLS. So I think she's busy and never mind anyone is very know about pos i'm not sure whether they will show like items the the coefficients all those um the the statistical result each items is not like products because uh to evaluate product there are five or six items 
or the questions yeah. in the question A? Yes, Dr. Te, they can actually um, uh, determine for each variables or items in the variables. Oh, then I think it's the same things because I, I, I found a lot of journals which is published by using POS that didn't go deep for that. They're only saying that the uh, product is yeah positive, yeah. negative. They didn't go yes. for the items. Yes. But in thesis, it's totally different. You, you, it is better to go for items. Exactly. So you will, yeah, you, you will know each item, which items are are explained attitudes and finally will lead to the length of stay. So you can see my result. You see, MM1 is a marketing mix to the questions. Actually, I'm I'm not going for like a, a, a whole like products. I didn't go only product. I go for items. So you will, it is easier for you to go to for your discussions at at the end, because if you have a positive result for product to attitude without the items, how are you going to know which items are really significant or positive relationship or negative relationships? I'm not sure because I read through the uh, few theses that only mentions about this by using POS, which is not right for PhD thesis. It, it will be go for items. Okay, actually, I'm not really familiar with the PLS. I took course before. I I didn't use it for publications and research, but I know how it's work. It's really easy to use. Yeah, that's all. What I know about PLS, smart PLS. Okay. So this one is the mediator relationship. Why I say so is like uh, previously I test the hypothesis, the direct relationship. I want to see the marketing mix, whether like Malaysia have their price, have a promotions to promote Malaysia tourism to, to the overseas. And they will affect the tourists when they decide how many days they want to stay in, in Malaysia during their holiday. And then this is the direct relationship, but actually marketing mix will affect their attitude, whether they enjoy it or not, uh, because based on the product that we offer to the, to the tourists and price, the place, the promotions, all four piece we, we offer to the tourists from overseas. And all these things will affect their attitudes. And finally, attitude will lead to their length of stay. So this is the hypothesis that I put in. But at the end, the result shows that um, the attitude did some 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 matter, but but it's not so significant. It's still direct relationship will be better. So this is what you are going to do, and I'm going. I I I'm not using POS because POS will directly show that, but I'm not using that. So I I will have comparison like first model. First model actually is for my my direct relationship and second model is the the model uh, the mediator the mediator relationship so i compare both which one is better so at the end i will i will write down which is the good uh, the better model so which one explain better whether we need to have a mediator or not this is what i desire because i i understand that pos will be another way to analyze it Okay, so I go to moderator. So I have two moderators. Okay, this is the moderator. Okay, uh, there are four direct relationships. Actually, this is the hypothesis one. And then now I'm going to test uh, the cohort age by senior and uh, young tourists and the travel distance, median haul and long haul. And median haul is like from China, uh, three to five hours flight from, from their home country to Malaysia. And uh, longer than eight hours, there will be long haul, which is Europeans, uh, 
US, all those uh, very long haul countries, the distance. Okay, so now I want to test uh, whether what if I put these moderators into this, whether it influences the relationship or not. So at the end, the result will be something like this, senior, non-senior, and then there will be a difference research result you can see uh, have you see the the senior is no much significance because they, they they don't care they have money they have time to travel longer but non-senior no they have commitment they have to work to have to earn money they have uh, children so it is makes sense for the result okay and that uh the others Senior, non senior, there are so many each variables, and this is long haul and medium haul. You see, there, there is a more or less the, the price of transport actually is significant to the medium haul because long haul they already, I mean, pay a lot of money, so they will prefer to stay longer or uh, conversely. So, you can, yeah, in the discussion, then you have to say why the result is significant for median and why it is not in long haul and what the previous study say but so far this is a new items that i add in so no much comparison from the previous study so it is really my work to to do that so yeah long haul medium haul all these are moderator and mediator i hope that it is clear for you to understand what is what are the difference for both of these uh yeah phd this is if you are using qual, qual, quantitative i think they will ask you to have model uh moderator and mediator Okay, now actually I finished my presentations. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. I think I out, out of topic because I go for the others as well. <laughs> do you have um, Dr. Isanti? Yeah, do you have any question for Dr. Te? I think it's uh, very interesting, yeah. Um, I think there are some of them who are just entered the uh, studies and they just registered for their studies and just started, especially those who are doing masters by research, they were like, what, they don't get the idea yet, yeah, Dr. Te. So, um, but uh, you give them a very brief um, explanation on that and uh, I, uh, I hope that they get uh, some information how to uh, to do it, yeah? How to the other students, yeah? Um, again, I would really like to emphasize, I really love the thing that you mentioned just now, Dr. Tay. Um, doing PhD That's and Masters, you need to be alert and responsible, right? You cannot just go to your supervisors and ask, okay, what do I need to do next, ah, doctor? Uh, sekarang, uh, what, what, ah, uh, can I ask this? Uh, you can ask, yeah, but um, uh, then you will, doctor, my research quantity or quality, doctor? You know, those kind of questions. Some students might be asking. Yeah, you cannot ask that. Wow. Oh, tak boleh, student. You need to do your research. Come to your supervisors and tell them, doctor, my research is about this. Prepare, prepare your, your, your topics, prepare your questions, you know, because your supervisor are busy, all of them are busy. So they not, they are not able to think for you. Right. Dr. Te. Yes, correct. Yeah. And this is your thesis. Don't tell me, I mean, doing your proposal defense and the examiner asks you why you have this framework. Uh? Oh, my supervisor, Paki Tao, must he do this much and too? Wow, then you will die on the stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some students, uh, some students even, uh, I think I've, I've done a few sessions too. Some students, are, uh, not some, lah. there are limited students who don't even know why they use that theory, you know? And some, yeah, exactly. Uh, some, some of the students use like five theories five or three theories, you know, but did not, yeah, you can put a lot of theories, but you need to mention it, yeah? Like what Dr. Rosaidi 
uh, mentioned last week where she said that he said that you can include theories okay for 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 qualitative or conceptual theories but you need to explain in detail and you need to know the the, the theories justifications yes correct uh, that is very important and i tell you why okay this is my experience as well theoretical framework Okay, H1, H2, H3, mediation, uh, mediating, variable, moderating, these are important, yeah. I've seen people uh, who need to read the RP because why? Because the framework is not, uh, although it's a conceptual, it's not uh, convincing, it's not supported, yeah, Dr. Te. So, saya takut lah. I hope that uh, we don't face this with our students, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This uh, yeah. By the way, you can use your multi theories. You can combine few yeah. theory in your research. It, it it can be. Yes. But you need to justify why you need to use so many theories. When you add one more theory, it means that you have more hypotheses. Ah, uh, Doctor Te, there's a uh, one question here. How to justify the validity of the new framework based on the existing theories? How to justify the validity? Mm, the validity should be your data analysis at the end, but uh, for the framework, it from your literature review, yes, <laughs> your previous study, you you have you have based on, based on your literature review. Of course, it must be make sense. You need to explain to you, to people. Actually, the one that expert in your research is not your supervisor. It's not the others. It's you. <laughs> you are the one to do the literature review. You, for example, when you you. You have completed a framework and you show your supervisor and your supervisor will ask you, hey, why you, you let up is in here? Why you put this as a moderator? Why you put in the middle between of independence and, and dependent variable? You have to justify why. Oh, you believe, uh, I mean, you can tell the, the, the supervisor saying that, um, doctor, I found that from previous study, who, 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 year, which years, and then they said that there will be a, a relationship between these two, but however, that research haven't done yet, but they suggest for the future study. will be fine. That is the validity of the new framework. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, maybe somebody might, might be asking, uh, yeah, uh, doctor, um, theory first, Oh, uh, this uh, your framework first, ah, uh, Doctor Te. Both are together, right? How are you going? Oh, okay. It is very easy. You must have an idea. Is it Doctor Isandi? The idea is means that what you mean for framework. Yes, you you need to okay. have an idea first, then do reading. Yes, right, Doctor Te. Yes, then you look for the, the topics and see what are the previous study did for the theory and then you take it. Actually, it's not only one theory. I, I believe that I use, um, uh, I don't know, you can, I can show you my thesis. I write a lot of theory here. Hold on, let me share you this one. So, here, literature review. I'm not talking about theory of plant behavior one only. You can see this is the trick decisions making theories. How they make their decisions for length of stay. See, this is the first theory that in 1976 people have talking about this, the, the flow chart, and then in 1977, there is another four charts again for the framework, decision making framework, and go in. There are so many frameworks or theory or models. Then, at the end, you will find out the most suitable one. So many. Okay. Yeah, this is the most suitable one that I choose to use for my thesis in 1992. Of course, there are the others. So this is the the comparisons of the theories in tourism. Yeah, I will list down what are the contributions, what are the limitations. At the end, why I choose the theory of plant behavior. And this is a study 
uh, the previous study that used the theory of prime behavior in their research. So, and this is the, it's better you have the empirical studies like this to telling people, actually you are referring what the teacher. So there's so many of them. So it's very, very comprehensive. And previous study on the determinants of length of stay, uh, the variables, the independent variable, how I going to form it, how I going to form the moderator, mediator, all this will be coming up here. You see, I didn't mention about marketing mix. And because that is a new things for me, there, there is, um, there are no research have been done for marketing mix. So there will be a new for my thesis. So you need to know you must have something new for your thesis as well, especially for PhD. So this is how it looks for literature review. You see, at the end, I come out a paper. Some of them are using these, that, this, that, and okay. So this is the previous study, what they did for length of stay. And then I show you before the theoretical framework and hypothesis developments. And each hypothesis, this is the framework that I propose, and I will go deep to it, like each relationship between marketing mix, this is hypothesis one, then how I going to form it, because I review a lot of papers, uh, the articles, journals, and then finally, I will just come out the final hypothesis here. See, and then next we go for the another hypothesis, hypothesis 1.2, and then go tip on it. And maybe some of the supervisor will ask you if you have how, uh, I mean, your research objective actually, uh, research objective actually is reflects in your hypothesis, which is true, but you no need to be have so many. If you have 10 hypotheses, then you have 10 research objective. That is not, uh, you can combine it like 1.1, 1.2 like this. So actually, I only have three uh, research objectives, but in these three, I will have uh, seven, seven hypotheses. So this is all. Oh, some of you will have a um, Guali, right? That, hold on, I show you the Guali, how the qualitative research thesis will look like. Let me check. Can you all follow up or I'm too fast? Okay, there's a question here. Any tips on conceptual framework for qualitative research? Uh, yeah, here maybe? I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to share with oh. you now, right now. And also there's another question is, hi, doctor. If I have the conception mm. model and proposition, which part should I put in the proposal? You have to put both, Mr. or Miss. Yeah, you have to put your conceptual model, model and your proposition. Proposition, uh, yes. Can you let that do it work, Dr. Te? Yeah, yes. you have to put it in your chapter two. Yes, in your proposal. Yes. Okay. Dr. Another question, Doctor Sayela. Uh, proposition me, it is not final, right? Because you have yet to test it, right? Yes, 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 exactly. If, right. If the end, uh, yeah, then you say lah, support or tak support kan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Actually, it's hypothesis lah. Yeah, but it's approaches is hypothesis lah. Actually, <laughs> but actually, but it's for quantitative studies, right? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show you this is the Dr. Chai uh, thesis. You know how old is him? He is uh, 79 years old and completed her uh, his PhD two years ago, 2018. Yeah, same years as me. So you can imagine how ambitious he is. He was, he is, yeah. Okay, this is the high, um, his PhD thesis. Okay, you can see this is fully qualitative. What are the difference actually 
it's no much difference. Okay, there is a literature review. You see what he did is he go for the revitalizations of decline town and go into the need for urban revitalizations. As I said, there is no mass or compulsory or, or a formula for you to do your literature review. You can do it your way. You don't need to follow the previous people that, that did it, but you can reference, not copy, and you can have your own arrangements. This is the strategies that uh, he suggests at the end. Uh, this is the strategy. And I want to show you his conceptual framework, which is I show to my, my students, right? Who's not? Okay, this is the one. The, 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 as I said, it can be a process for your conceptual frameworks. At the end, you will come out something like this. This is the one that he want to do at the end. So it will come out the revitalizations model for, for, the, for the final result because it will, uh, he will go to like, uh, I think it's a group discussions, a focus group discussion for this. I was one of the... Um, the members who help him to collect the data because we are work as a team. So selective revitalizations models and the end, this is the ones how he justified the model. Actually, he used the selective revitalizations model for this. And he also talked about the reconstruct constivity what is this reconstitutions model and also suburban sub suburbanizations models but it is only talk about few items here but it, 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 this one is talk about all the items that's the reason why he choose this see he is a very good justifications for the for this thesis and even though it is like this, but at the end, it is still have a theory. So it doesn't mean that if you use qualitative, so I don't need to think about theory. No, that is, that, that is no. Some people, they will ask you, you must have a theory for your fundamental. But you have to justify if you don't have a theory, why? And if you have a theory for your qualitative, you can say so because um, it's like this qualitative is where we are going to building a theory. But it's not wrong if you have a theory at first because you, as a reference, I'm not going to apply that theory, but I, as a reference to use in my framework, in my conceptual framework, that is no problem. Okay. So, and then. And yeah, 79 years old, huh? the Dr. Chai hmm, is already retired. And this is the key informers that are involved in the, I mean, focus group discussions. He from USM. So you see, this is the informer. They already have a total of uh, 26 of them. And this is the strategy that um, it mentions. And this is the, sorry, 26 is the, the respondents and what they say. So this is what you need to do if you do the discussions, focus group discussions. Uh, the case study is in remote. Uh, so. See, this is the framework for research proposal, research process. Yeah, the other interview stakeholders. Yeah, of course, you need to have a pilot test. Unless you are from coursework, then you don't need to have it. Yeah, this one, the ones that I was involved before. And focus group discussions and the opinion survey. And then finally is the model developments. This is the result, how they revitalize the place. By the way, he was a teacher, an English teacher. 
his English is tip top, what I can say is. Lawrence, how going to revitalize the urban? Okay. I want to show you the China. Yeah, chapter six. The implications, I think this one is here. Yeah, this is the final one. At the end, you will come out a final model. But as I said, model actually is, is already tested in that area and is workable, practical. So we call it model. So it's no more theory. Because um, his thesis at the end is for model divide, divide, uh, developments. So at the end, it's come out like this. So this is the, uh, the strategies. If to revitalize the urbans. Yeah. Okay. That's all. So now you know <laughs> how to do it, right? <laughs> if you are doing your Okay, so um, that was a uh, qualitative research and the ones that I show you for my PhD thesis is a uh, quanti. That's all. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you another thing, Sona. Let me share again. Okay, go back to my thesis. And at the end, after you finish your, your, your qualitative, quantitative, this is quantitative, huh? and the end, you will come out something like this. Yeah, the red color one is the highlight one. And it's a negative relationship. When the law season discount is given, actually they will they will stay shorter. It means like there is no so significant. So but it it, it, it turned out differently from the hypothesis that I said. So it is quite weird and the budgets and resources, but I, I, I will, I have explained it in the discussion, but I forgot it at so, so long times, three years ago. And this one is for the, um, hypothesis two, the mediator. Yeah. Uh, these are the negative one. I put in like this, and this is the mediators, senior, non-senior, and these are the, the important things or the negative. Um, I forgot already. And this is the another moderator. So at the end in your chapter five, you still need to present your framework. That's why I say the framework is very important from the start to the end. So yeah, and then the practical implications in your chapter five. That's all. Okay. Hmm, just now I say I want to show you. Okay, uh, another thing is... Publications. Journals. And this is the journals that I publish. And I want to show you this one. Just now I said if you're using the qualitative, at the end you will come out some things. Uh, you can be either just now the uh, Dr. Chai one or another one will be, hold on, slow. Okay. Um, I'm not sure whether it's this one. No, this one, sorry. Comprehensive. Oh my God, I'm... I think it's this one. I may stop sharing first because my laptop's very lag. Uh, 
Okay. I'm share again. Uh, yeah, it's open. While waiting, do you have any okay. question for Dr. Te? Yeah, you, you can write down in the chat or also you can ask me. Okay, okay uh, this uh, is uh, the uh, paper. Uh, mm. so, Dr. Sekejap, Dr. Saya nak, okay, uh, freeze here. Mm. Okay, freeze at the title just now. Title. Yeah. Okay. Look, uh, students. Um. Uh. I just want to share you my um my opinion. This is a uh, Dr. Tay's uh research uh, master's research. Okay. Paper from her thesis. How many names are there? Only two names. Why only two names? Because this is her supervisor. She needs to be the first. Yeah. Student. She needs to be the first, and the supervisor is the second. Same goes to you because I receive um, a few students who have five names here. Five names, the student's name under fifth, and no supervisor's name in the paper. Please include. Kesian your supervisor. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah. It is compulsory. You yeah. must put your supervisor because even he or she didn't look at the paper, but it's your responsibility to put her name because she or he are helping you to build the this whole is. research. Exactly. Correct. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Dr. Tay, you may continue. We have another. No, no, no. no. It, yeah, it is very important. Yeah. You see my, all the papers, I have a Prof. Jennifer name because uh, she is a, a, my supervisor. And I want to show you is this one. Yeah, you see, this is the final variable. So no, I think. Okay, this one. Uh, what I did for my master actually is the uh, to find the responsible tourism indicators in Kinabalu Park, the national park. Uh, Kuntasang, Kuntasang, you know that. Okay, this one actually is at the end. I did my um, study and I come out this. This is, yeah, you can see that there is not a theory, but this is the indicators. It can be said, I don't have a name for it, but this is the indicator. So you, you don't, you know, confused actually at the end, you are not building a theory, for example, like theory of plant behavior. No, it can be a, like just now the strategies the indicators uh the practices or whatever the motivations for example yeah so it, it it's no must have a theory or or uh, models that is not right huh? okay so this is it and this is another high impact journals which is q1 from my master thesis so you don't think that uh even you are in master, you still can produce a very good journals and it is very good for you. I don't have any paper for this. So, um, um, this one is another papers. Okay, that's all from me. So, I really hope that you all can get published in the Scopus journals, which is a requirement for you. And oh, no, that not no requirement for them, Dr. Tay. Not Scopus. Ah, huh? no more. Scopus slash uh, my site also can. Oh, my site. Yeah, ah. okay. My site also can. But uh, of course, you need to end high. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Scopus for PhD. <laughs> huh? Yeah, correct. Aim higher. So if you fall, you fall uh, not teruk sangat lah kan. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, I can publish by using my master thesis. So you can too yes see that's dr tay said if but you have to start very early like then doctor yes uh, it takes times but i'm i was lucky because the tourism management perspective i i got it uh without correction so uh, only three months then is accepted and published okay but cool. that, that was yeah it, it, it's really... i will invite you to to discuss on how to write the paper perhaps i don't know is that okay no not a problem not a problem yeah. good 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 okay if you uh do you have any other question thank you dr tay for the um uh, 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 the the explanation yeah we really appreciate it students are happy i think uh on on this matter they have clear picture or 
yeah, a big picture of how they what they need to do, yeah. Um, any other any other ma matters? Jasbula, yes, Yuana. These are all Shirley sh Hall. Can these are all names that uh, yeah frequently in here. I mean, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, another thing. Sorry, Doctor Izadi, can I share one point? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, what, when I did my PhD, I did change my title after three months. Um, you don't need to worry about if you want to change your title. It mean, actually, I already did my proposal, proposal, like chapter one to three for my proposal. And after three months, I changed it totally. I mean, the title, everything's I changed it. So, you know, that if you have this problem, you, you don't, you don't be afraid of that. Where once you realize that the, the research title is not workable for your PhD, you need to change it. You, you don't want to start with that because you are already put a thought. So you don't want to change it. You don't so stubborn. Then at the end, you will not going to graduate. So if you find out there is a problem for your thesis, the previously I did is a visitor management in um, Burao Redang. But when I want to build a framework, I, I still propose to use the Guali. Uh, qualitative because I I was I use uh, qualitative for my master so in the PhD I still want to use the quality and I I started to do I prepare chapter one to three and I'm going to proposal defense at the end I found out that uh, there is no <laughs> no points that I can finish it because I want to build the model for Pulau Redang how they co can control the the pollutions and all those things. At the end, I found how I going to justify the pollutions is go down. So I'm going. I'm not going to solve this problem. A very very big problems, which is that's why you no need to think that you want to do like a research that can save the world. World there is no such thing. So you want to get. Yeah, of course, at the end, you want to graduate, right? You want to finish your thesis, right? Even you have a big idea, but it is not practical for your for your thesis. Yeah, so you, you need to change it, but no need to worry because the, the, the ones that you did for your wrong, I mean, titles, you can put it as a publication. I published two from the, I mean, the wrong I mean, the, the, how I say the literature review from the literature review as a conceptual paper. So th this is things that when you are in the right way, but don't worry, you can change it during your journey. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Izanti.